Welcome to Roll for Geekiness. I'm A, this is J, and <laughs> today, we, and he's ridiculous, and today we're reviewing the Key City Steampunk right? Festival. Festival. It was a festival. In Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. Highlights, I guess? Highlights, no? sure. So, and then we can talk more about them. Highlights. It was nice that... It was all in one hotel again. I always like that. Um, <laughs> I would say they were pretty well organized. There were lots of good classes and a little bit more in terms of options than the last steam steampunk event we went to. And yeah, there are some also some things that I wished were different, but we'll get to those, I'm sure. Yeah. So, how about the, hmm, I've, I always want to say classes, but they're not always classes. Sometimes they're workshops, sometimes they're other events that are, are going on or that you can participate in. So, yeah, I mean, I guess we'll probably just keep saying classes. There was, there was a lot going on. Uh, I think the sessions didn't start until about 11 a.m. every day, but they tended to run till midnight. Yes, that's or so. Great. So, uh, so, so definitely, this was a, a con for the night owls, um, not the morning people, um, in terms of how stuff was scheduled. And there were always at least three to four things going on every session, if not more. Uh, I think, if mm -hmm. we were to look at the schedule. Um, yeah, and they varied from, again, classes on leatherworking and literature and tea uh, to, to what else? To making. Yes, um, plenty of making stuff. Yeah, I think if we... I think there are some general categories that these types of things tend to fall into when you go to steampunk events. There's literature, there's history, there's making, there's booziness, there's... I know, I know that's making, but it seems to be a its own little side thing. Um, yeah, if you have certain type of presenters that are good at presenting that sort of stuff. Yes. Um, yeah, I mean, there, you, could, you could even say here, while, while at Symposium it was definitely a little bit more booziness here, that you could you could say it was a little more beverageiness because there was I'd some say libation. sodas. Yes. That was, a, that was a fun little class. Um, yes. But yeah, uh, and, and then there were some more, uh, what you would think would be kind of like keystone attraction events that, like the splendid teapot race and the nerf dueling and tea dueling um, which were all definitely in the schedule but they weren't really highlighted and that was that was interesting to me um, but that was also because there wasn't an Olympiad at this event like there was at the symposium so I, I, I found that interesting too but we can loop back to that um, so, so yes, there was a good variety, there was a good volume. I think the other thing that I found weird, um, that was either, either, it was either both convenient or inconvenient, depending on when it was, was that there was a half an hour between each of the class sessions. You had an yes. hour class, and then there was a half an hour between, which is good for the presenters. It gives them, them time to pack, it gives the one presenter time to pack up, gives the other presenter time to set up. Maybe rearrange the room a little bit if they have to, clean up if the last person left a mess, whatever. Um, you don't need to feel like, oh, I need to run out from this session to get to the next class if you're an attendee, but... That's true. It also means that, like, sometimes you're just kind of like, well, I've got half an hour to kill until something else. On the other hand, if there was a particular time slot where you're like, hmm, we could skip all of these, you had two hours, actually, to, like, say, that's when we'll go get a meal somewhere or or like go sit down and, and take a break so you'd, you'd have a good two hours there rather than just the one uh, because of the way the schedule is arranged so that, that could be convenient around meal times or other times of day when you're just like you need to take a load off but yeah however I think 
the drawback of that is there really wasn't any central place for people to just go and hang out. There was the vendor room and then the vendors actually spilled out into the hallway and then all the rooms for the classes or eventiness. I will make that work. Um, so there, there was like a patio along the back end which was where you were supposed to go to like smoke and people did go and hang out there but it was also middle of August so uh, you know, when it's 80-something degrees out and you're wearing a whole bunch of layers because Victoriana, um, yeah, it, it it was it was more conducive to the to the evening hanging out, I think, yes. than it was to the daytime hanging out. Um, yeah. In general, so so yeah, if there had been a little bit more of an informal hanging outy space that was part of the event mm -hmm. venue, I think that uh, that would have mitigated that kind of feeling lost during some of those class transitions. Well, and like you said, during that day, I personally think it just kind of impeded the opportunity to just have informal chats with people because if you wanted to do that, you had to actually kind of leave right the hotel and go out onto the patio to do that. And so you're cut off from everything else. It's not even like it's this open, right? air forum where you can drift in and out. Mm -hmm. So it did feel a little a little cut off from everything else. Um, and I'm sure it was fine in the evening, but not so much during the day. That's very true. Schedule wise, it would have been nice to mm. have a little bit more detail about things ahead of time or to just have a sense of who is going to be presenting certain topics or what to expect. Some of the titles of the eventiness was, that doesn't work, titles of eventiness was. Classiness. Titles were. Titles were. Hmm. So some of the titles of the eventiness were very transparent and, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, face valid, right? Just, they were, they were what they were. But other <laughs> events, like, Something, something about, about something, something awesome. awesome. That was literally the name of a class, and you didn't know. There, there were no descriptions of classes given online or in the printed schedule. I don't even know if they collected class descriptions from the presenters. But they also didn't tell you who the presenters were in the program, so you couldn't even be like, oh, it's this person. It should at least be amusing if you knew who those people were. So, yeah. And I could actually see... Once again, pros and cons. I can see the benefit of printing presenters. I can also see people being like, I don't know who that is, and that perhaps being a downside. So I don't know that I was as concerned with the presenters, but it really would have been nice. Just even like a like a one sentence. That's all it had to be, or like a few words to describe what to expect mm -hmm. um, would have been really helpful for just having a sense of, or even, honestly, as we're talking about it, I'm thinking even... Uh, color coding things to write on the program to be like these are the the orange ones are the history ones you're gonna go learn some stuff about history right these are all the literature ones right these are all the just having something to help me know like what to expect a little bit more would have been helpful or a, a description would have been good yeah and there was a little bit of effort in sort of tracking classes in terms of yeah. most of the ones that had something to do with literature were in one particular room but not always there were some cl classes that were in that room that were not literature based and i think some of the other there i think there were some sessions that were literature based and weren't in that room so i'm, I'm thinking of of the women in flight thing like that mm -hmm. was taught by that was presented by an author who said here are historical figures that i based my fictional characters off of that wasn't in that room mm -hmm. uh, it was in a different room so so yeah yeah maybe maybe like asking the presenters to kind of pick a lane would have helped with that so at least you had a sense because i think there was also one that was there was a class that was supposed to be about like sword fighting or something and then there was I heard people grumbling later that it was about how to write a good sword fighting scene, mm. not actually anything about sword fighting. Victorian era sword fighting or dueling. So, so yeah, I think without any context, without any description of the class, 
like uh, there was definitely some some confusion I think or or just complete lack of information we didn't you know something about something awesome might get some someone to go hmm well I'll go see what that is because wow it's something about something awesome mm -hmm. but it made us just go I have no clue what that is let's go eat dinner <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah there are simple things that could have been done to just clarify some things um, but yeah uh, otherwise I was very very pleased with the things we went to for the most part. I think the other thing about scheduliness was that I, I think you said like it was available a week ahead of time and I, I know I'm, I completely missed it until we were like really, really on site but even a week like so this was the they had the first inaugural teapot races this year if I had only found out about it a week ahead of time, maybe I could have whipped something up. But if I'd heard about it beforehand, I probably could have actually planned to do something. And it's not like the event organizers weren't posting regular updates about the event. They were doing highlights on the vendors, on the special guests, and um, the, the vendors and the special guests for several weeks uh, on their social media stuff. Actually really just their, so, their Facebook because they don't really seem to be using their Instagram. Um, so they were using that and they were they were making doing highlights of things but they weren't highlighting any of the special events. And there was no mention of there being a teapot race or tea dueling or any of those other like what you might think of as very steampunky uh, events uh, happening so looping back I talked about uh, in terms of other things that were like steampunky in the past some of the events we've been to have had uh, that a steampunk olympiad or you know we've heard about that I've heard about these things like it was a thing we thought that like it was a thing when we went to symposium they had it there we were like cool um, there wasn't an olympiad at, at Key City um, there were some of the events like we said like I mentioned earlier in terms of like nerf dueling tea dueling that were part of an olympiad but we didn't see any representation of like local airships, which are, you know, the little steampunky clubs, I guess would be the easiest way to describe an, an airship, right? It's a bunch of people that say, like, we're gonna be our own little club, and whether that's based on a group of friends or locality or whatever uh, within a state. So we didn't see any representation of Pennsylvania or neighboring area airships. There was no Olympiad for those airships to participate in. And for clarification, we're not even sure what Pennsylvania does, though, in terms of airships. So for all we know, right. that's not an active, right, a real active component of the community in Pennsylvania. Right. There, there may not be. I think it was just it was worth noting that there, there was no such event or overarching event as part of this event feature feature overarching feature as part of this event. Yes, that's um, true. Just which, the theme. if you're expecting that from, because you're used to it from wherever, wherever else you might be coming from, and they do that, they don't, they don't do it here. Yes. Or there was, there were vendors. There were lots of vendors. Probably a similar amount, maybe a few more. Than... I think there were a few more, but yeah, when you're talking, forty to fifty vendors saying, ten percent more vendors isn't isn't that many. So I think I felt like there were a little bit more than the last event that we were at, just because, like you said, they were in the part of the ballroom space, and then they were also lining the hallway around all of that, as you said, so. But that also included the special guest tables, which were also in the hallway at the last event. So yeah, yeah, I think yeah. on par. Yeah, and see, there was a similar variety, maybe a little bit more variety, actually, this time around, in terms of what was being offered. There were there were some things that were a little bit different um, that I hadn't seen a symposium, so I I felt like there was actually a little bit more variety. So there were obviously people we'd seen at symposium that we saw again. Yeah, a couple of vendors. Not not many though. There wasn't no. a ton of crossovers. So that was that was nice. nice. It wasn't yeah. like all the same people. Mm -hmm. um, 
and everyone was very friendly as usual and which you would assume right they're trying to sell you stuff but <laughs> um but i don't know i've been surprised before so it was yeah. nice that everyone was very um amicable and, and easy to talk to and accommodating so that was that was nice I think the only other thing that kind of falls into the ca the space of vendors and, and goes into the what you're saying, or maybe a little bit more organized than the last one, too, is that there was also the hotel had a mm. concession stand that was within the event space, uh, kind of off to the end, so it wasn't, like, obtrusive. But when the hotel restaurant's not open for lunch... Uh, like, where are you going to go for lunch? Um, so the hotel had, was running a concession stand that was part of the event space, so you could just go over there and get a few kind of... They had some hot and cold options, all of it was kind of grab-and-go. Um, mm -hmm. But it was you know, it was overpriced convention food. It was what it was. Um, but it was it was, it was was welcome that mm -hmm. it was there and that was an easy option. Uh, you could easily go grab that in a, a half hour between classes. And It's interesting, too. I felt like the crowd... Uh, the people coming through, there was definitely uh, more high variability in terms of the level of costuming um, or meeting the aesthetic of steampunk. So that was that was interesting just to note that it seemed like some people were really right. I mean, there were people who came bringing their A++ game, and that's awesome. Uh, and then there were people who really, I don't know, if had, they had much of anything going on. Yeah, I found that interesting as well, that, right. There were definitely people, and again, like like a lot of these events, there was a theme, mm -hmm. and some people were just kind of in their in their usual steampunk garb, and that's fine. And some people like stepped up to the theme, and that was cool. And then and then yeah, like there were a couple people that were just kind of. Actually, I think th this was even more variable. I think there were some people that were like literally just in like. Mm -hmm t-shirt and jeans they had their geek like, t-shirt on and right, right something and then maybe they bought some goggles or something at, that while they were there um and so it was yeah it was really ran the gamut and that was not our experience at any other steampunk event that we've been to with the exception of Enchanted City, but Enchanted City was a side-by-side -side with a local farmer's market. So you had a lot of people that were just kind of like wandering in and being like, what's going on here? So you don't expect them to be in costume. So. Yeah, I think, I think it, I think what I liked about it actually was that it felt very inclusive and no one, there was no sense of gatekeeping or people, right? being clicky or weird about who was dressed up or who wasn't. Um, it just felt like, yep, if you come as you are, right, to whatever extent you want to participate in terms of the costuming. So I actually appreciated that. On the flip side, I also do appreciate seeing all the cool costumes and going and really getting to meet other people who are interested in trying to create that aesthetic. So. Mm -hmm. So I think there were pros and cons to that. Like, I appreciate that the community is so open and welcoming, and there was no judgment. And at the same time, I, I wish I had seen a little bit more of dead up costumes. Trust right. me, there were plenty of awesome oh, costumes, yeah. but it would have been cool to see even more. So, to sum up, doo -doo -doo, it was fun. <laughs> Indeed, yeah. No, I had a good time as well. Um... It's not horribly distant from us, so we will probably look at attending it again. Yeah, I'd go future. back. Yeah. I would return as well. Excellent. Would recommend if you're, you know, into the steampunk scene and... Or interested in getting into the steampunk mm -hmm. scene. It's like you said, it was very inclusive. Yes, very inclusive. Everyone's was very friendly. I don't remember having... I remember having some awkward exchanges, but that is just part of any geekdom kingdom that you go into. There's always going to be a little bit of social anxiety or awkwardness for some people, myself included. Um, but generally speaking, everyone was very friendly. So. Yeah. Yep. And there were plenty of things to do and interesting people to chat with and yeah. Thumbs up. Three cogs out of five. Four cogs out of five. Four cogs out of five. Sorry, I dropped a cock.
<laughs> there it is. Perfect. Put it back in my brain where it belongs. Excellent. And remember, dirigible parking will not be validated. Mm. Sorry. Bully. <laughs>